and we're talking about inscribed angles and arcs. So first let's define what an inscribed angle is and then we will um, then we'll decide, then we'll figure out how, how it relates to what we already know about what we already know about circles. So an inscribed angle. An inscribed angle has its vertex on the circle. and its sides are chords. And the sides are chords. So let's draw a picture of an inscribed angle, and so we so we know what we're talking about. So here's my circle, and my center, and there's an there's an inscribed angle, and we'll call this circle P, and we'll call this A, B, and C. And we say that angle ACB is inscribed in circle P. And arc AB is intercepted by angle ACB. So that's what that's what a that's what an inscribed angle looks like. It just has to have its vertex on the circle and the sides are chords of the circle. And what we want to figure out today is how this relates to how this relates to this arc. We know that if we if we know the measure of the central angle, if we know how many degrees the central angle is, the arc and the central angle are the same, the same number of degrees. But now we have this inscribed angle, we want to figure out how how that works with with the arc. So, I'm going to we're going to go through together and if you want to follow along, if you have a book on page uh, 581, we're going to work on this little chart. All right, so here's our chart. Here's what we're looking at. And what we want to do is we have, we have an inscribed angle, angle AVC, and we're looking at angle 1 and angle 2. Um, now, on this picture, what part of the circle is segment VP? Radius. VP is a radius. What part of the circle is segment PA? It's also a radius. So I'm going to redraw this triangle over here and just make it a little bigger. So we know that this side is a radius and this side is a radius, so they are the same. And this is angle 1 and angle 2. If these two sides are the same, what does that tell us about angle 1 and angle 2? 
They're also the same. We have an isosceles triangle. So the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 2. So we can start on our chart, because this is an isosceles triangle, all of, angle, all of the angle 2's are going to be the same as angle 1. So if angle 1 is 20, angle 2 is going to be 20. If angle two, 1 is 30, angle 2 is going to be 30. If angle 1 is 40, angle 2 is going to be 40. And if angle 1 is x, what is angle 2? OK. Now let's look at this, this drawing again. I'll, I'm going to extend this out, just making this drawing a little bigger. And this is angle 3. And let's call this angle 4. Angle 1 plus angle 2, measure of angle 1 plus a measure of angle 2 plus a measure of angle 4 have to equal what? 180. So we know that measure of angle 1 plus a measure of angle 2 plus a measure of angle 4 equals 180. What about the measure of angle 4 and the measure of angle 3? What do those two have to add up to? 180 also. So the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4 equals 180. So since both of these things are adding to measure of angle 4 to get 180, what does that tell you about measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 and the measure of angle 3? They, they all also have to be the same. So this tells us that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals a measure of angle 3. That shouldn't be a 1 here. Measure of angle 3. So we can figure out our measure of angle 3's here in our chart. So if measure of angle 1 is 20, measure of angle 2 is 20, what's measure of angle 3? 40. If each one is 30, what's measure of angle 3? 60. Each one is 40. I get 80. If each one is x, add them together, I get 2x. Are we good? Yeah, I think we're good. All right. Now, we know the measure of angle 3 for each of these. So we know that angle. How is the measure of this angle related to the measure of this arc? How do we find the measure of an arc of the circle? Do you remember? Uh, we're not looking for arc length. We're just looking for the angle, the degree measure. So if this, if this angle is 50 degrees, what's this arc? 50. They're the same. If this arc is 100 degrees, this arc is, or if this angle is 100 degrees, this arc is 100 degrees. So now we know measure of angle 3. We can figure out the measure of the arc. So if measure of angle 3 is 40, what's the measure of the arc? They're the same, right? We just said they were the same. 40. If the angle is 60, what's the arc? 60. If the angle is 80, the arc is 80. If the angle is 2x, the arc is also 2x. So we've, we've sh we worked with one case of an inscribed angle. For this inscribed angle, our one side of the angle happens to be the diameter. But what do we see? If the angle if the inscribed angle, the measure of the inscribed angle is 20 degrees, the measure of the arc is 40. If the measure of the inscribed angle is 30, the measure of the arc is 60. If the measure of the angle is 40 degrees, the measure of the arc is 80 degrees. If the measure of the angle is x, the measure of the arc is 2x. So how are the angle, the inscribed angle and the arc related? Multiply by 2. The arc is 2 times as big as the angle. So this leads us to our important theorem about inscribed angles. So let's go back to our page. This gives us our inscribed angle theorem. And our 
inscribed angle theorem tells us that an inscribed angle is half the intercepted arc. And we could say it the other way around also, or the intercepted arc measures twice the, me the inscribed angle. So the, the angle is half the arc, or the arc is twice the angle. And if we want to draw a picture for that, we would have, there's our circle and our, and our center. And there's our inscribed angle. And we'll call this ABC. Measure of arc AC is 2 times the measure of angle ABC, or the measure of angle ABC is 1 half the measure of arc AC. Questions on our theorem? So now we know a new, a new part of a circle. We've talked about chords, we've talked about radii, we've talked about diameters, we've talked about a central angle where the vertex is at the center. We've talked about arcs, major arcs, minor arcs. We figured out how to measure, find the degree measure of arcs. And we found out how to figure out the arc length of major and minor arcs. Well, now we know about inscribed angles and how they relate to their intercepted arcs. The inscribed angle theorem gives us a couple of important, important pieces of information. So our important results from the inscribed angle theorem. Import end. Important results. We have two, two important results. One is the right angle corollary. The right angle corollary, and remember, a corollary is just a, a theorem that comes very easily from another theorem. So the right angle corollary tells us that if an inscribed angle intercepts a semicircle, then it's a right angle. And our picture for that, so here's our circle and our center. And we have a diameter here. A di diameter cuts our circle into two semicircles. 
and here's my inscribed angle that intercepts that semicircle. And we'll call this circle P. And this is ABC. And this is point D here. So arc BDC is a semicircle. So the measure of angle BAD, or BAC, sorry, BAC is 90 degrees. And this is really easy to prove because how many degrees is half a circle? 180. So the arc is 180. The angle is half the arc, so the angle has to be 90. So if, if our inscribed angle intercepts a semicircle, so if the ends of our inscribed angle are on a diameter, then our inscribed angle is 90 degrees. Questions on that? All right, our other important result is the arc intercept corollary. And this one is another another really important important thing that we'll use a lot when we're working with circles. Our arc intercept corollary tells us that if two Inscribed angles intercept the, the same arc, then the angles are, the, are congruent. So if two inscribed angles intercept the same arc, the angles are congruent. So our picture for this is here is our circle. And we have two inscribed angles. And we'll label this A, B, C, D. And notice this; these are not crossing at the center of the circle. This place where they're crossing is not the, not the center of the circle. So that's easy to confuse. This isn't the center of the circle. Um, what the arc intercept corollary tells us is that angle B, A, C, this angle here, is congruent to angle BDC. They intercept the same arc. And we can look at the other look at the other the other arc and and uh, angles that are related. Uh, angle ABD and angle ACD both intercept arc AD. So angle ABD is congruent to angle ACD. Oops, I forgot my angle. And I'll just highlight the, the arcs that are congruent. So this is this arc here. And that is for these angles. And the green one <coughs> we're here. And that is for these angles.
So because the angles intercept the same arcs, they're congruent. And that one's pretty easy to see also, because we said the, the measure of the arc is half, or the measure of the angle is half the measure of the arc, and both of these have the same arc here at their ends. Questions on our corollaries? All right, let's do a couple of examples and then we'll be done. So for this example, here's our picture. And we have a couple of, a couple of inscribed angles. And this angle, we'll say, is 24 degrees. And this is A, C, D, B. And we want to find the measure of arc D, C and the measure of angle B. So our, our angle, CAB, yep. is 24 degrees. So what does that make arc CD? Now we're, we, have a, we have an inscribed angle, not a central angle. So we're talking about this, this angle. This angle here and this arc. So how are they related? One more time. Angle is half the arc, right? So the arc would be 48. The arc is twice the angle, or the angle is half the arc. So the measure of arc DC equals 2 times 24 degrees, or 48 degrees. And if this arc is 48 degrees, what does that make this angle down here? 24. It's an inscribed angle. It's half the arc. The measure of angle B equals 48 divided by 2, or 24 degrees. So the angle is half the arc, or the arc is twice the angle. So got one more example. This, this time we have some parallel lines involved here. So here's our circle. And this is A, B, D, C. This angle is 36 degrees. And segment AB is parallel to segment CD. So if I were to mark that on my figure, I'd have my arrows here. We want the measure of arc AC. So we have these two parallels, parallel chords. What kind of angle is, so arc AC is related to this angle here, A, B, C. What kind of angles are these two angles for these two parallel lines? They're congruent, and what do we call them? We had a special name. They're on the opposite side of the transversal, and they're between the parallel lines. So they're alternate interior angles. So angle ABC and angle BC, BCD are alternate interior angles. So angle ABC is congruent to angle BCD. So this is also 36 degrees. So the measure 
of arc AC. If this angle is 36, what's the measure of the arc? 72. 72, twice the angle. So the measure of the arc is twi twice the angle, or 72 degrees. Now just a couple, of, couple more hints uh, for when you do your homework this evening. Um, today, when we worked on these from our opener and a couple of these problems, we ended up with, we were solving problems with circles. We ended up with triangles that we needed to deal with. For this problem, we ended up with parallel lines that we needed to, to remember something about. We might also have to remember some things about quadrilaterals, if we have quadrilaterals inside circles. So a lot of times, circle problems will be, will turn into triangle problems, will turn into parallel line problems, will turn into quadrilateral problems. So we'll need to remember the things that we learned about those, those different, um, those different things, triangles, parallel lines, quadrilaterals, to solve the problems with the circles. Questions on the examples? All right. Let me pass out your folders and we will go over homework.